it's time to have the once a year conversation. I usually don't do State of Overwatch videos too much because usually there's not a lot of drastic changes coming into the game. And after the PvE got canceled last year, and that was obviously a big, big heartbreaker to a lot of people, you know, I haven't really made a State of Overwatch video. We've had a lot of controversial topics come up, like primarily the 6v6 5v5 discussion, which I'm not going to touch on too much in this video. I want to talk about more so the flow of the game right now and where things stand, which, surprise, surprise, Team 4 in one year has had one of the better turns or turnarounds I've seen in gaming in a very long time. We're going to break all that down, but I just want to give everybody a big thank you for our charity stream for Kentucky Children's Hospital yesterday. I do have a mustache now. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. It's not usually my thing, but Stash Vito only comes out after after a charity stream and special events. And so I appreciate all you guys who helped raise money for the hospital, uh, the children's hospital that helped save my life when I was born because I was born early as well as my twin sister's life who was also, because we're twins, obviously we were both born early. Um, thank you guys so much. That really means the world. And I know there's a lot of kids in those hospitals that are going to benefit from what you guys did yesterday. So much love. Thank you all so much. Now let's start talking about Overwatch here. Um, a lot of people love my State of Overwatch videos, and I love making them too, because they're just cold hard truth, right? There's no, like, again, I'm not in the creator server. I have no incentive to just, you know, uh, quote unquote, glaze Blizzard. I've cut myself off from all of that, right? I, I pride myself on my authenticity, so you got to come here to hear the cold hard facts. Even back when the PvE got canceled, there was some fake narrative going around that the streamers were the reason that Overwatch 2 had a bad reputation, and the PvE wasn't canceled. It was just everything that was promised that was canceled. And lo and behold, the PvE gets canceled. You know, we were, of course, we were right, guys. Of course, you know what? Because we're always on the money, and I have pride in that. We are always on the money with this stuff. So I'm gonna say it how it is right here, right now. And I've got to give Team Four their flowers, guys. Let's start off with a new competitive system. For the first time in Overwatch 2, there is an actual system that you can point to and say, this is an upgrade, right? Desperately needed to happen. The first system was actually terrible. It was just bad. It was, it was, it was very clearly, it had to be rushed. All the features that they wanted to implement, they couldn't because they had to remake the system for Overwatch 2 and they were split in half between PvE and this stuff. And by the way, completely canceling the PvE was the best decision that Blizzard could make. They need to do everything they can, Team 4, to get away from the Overwatch 2 branding. And my hot take is that they should drop the branding altogether. Overwatch as an IP is salvageable. Overwatch 2's brand has been tarnished so much from unfulfilled promises that they need to just drop it. Get rid of it, sunk cost, flush it down the toilet, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but let's get back to the competitive system. They opened up grouping restrictions for all players, allowing stacking to come back, right? They encourage people to play with friends, and they're going to continue to do that more and more, which is what gaming is about. That's what attracts people to playing Overwatch, is playing with a variety of your friends. And they really nailed that, and they finally made the competitive season or competitive system feel a lot more rewarding. It's absolutely better, and I would say it's on par. I'm not sure if I'm going to say it's better, but it's definitely on par at the same level as Overwatch 1's, which is great. That's where it needed to be, and it very clearly wasn't there previously, and it's been received very well. So you have to give them their flowers there. Let's talk Aaron Keller. Aaron really has emerged as a great leader. Right. And, you know, there's a reason why when all this was going on, I wasn't blaming Aaron. Right. Because I, I, I don't think that he's had a real chance to show what he can do. And that doesn't really happen a lot. Like he didn't have an opportunity like they, like they, again. But people have to understand is like the Activision Blizzard acquisition of Microsoft was the biggest deal in gaming history. Right. There were a ton of moving parts way over the head of anybody at Team 4, like governmental stuff like the UK blocking the deal. Like, again, this is a 70 billion dollar deal, guys. This was not chump change. This was a huge, huge acquisition. And that was going to slow things down for a bit. So now all of that baggage from the old team is finally like this is really the first time where all the baggage of the past is behind. Right, they are, they are a free team, they can make their own decisions, they can do their own thing for the first time. One of the first things Aaron did as a leader was get rid of heroes in the battle pass, which was great, right? It was far too hard to access these characters. Heroes being locked for over a year is absurd, especially with how bad counterpicking is in this game. A lot of these heroes are essential, particularly the supports like Kiriko, right? Um... It's absurd that those heroes were still locked. And now they're going to be unlocked, which is great, which should encourage people to start playing the game more. I just hope that they can start selling enough skins to make up for the lost money. But at the same time, how much money did you lose by losing the faith of people by putting all this stuff behind a paywall, right? Maybe way less people be willing to invest in a game that definitely has predatory practices, right? And that's where you have to give him his flowers. You know, it's a, you know, he made that decision and it's the right one. 
So Aaron's emerged as a great leader to just starting off, you know, it's it's looking good, right? And Season 9 really is a different game of Overwatch with the DPS passive finally being viable and supports not dominating the game. There's a ton of DPS heroes that you can pick that can get value. Now, the higher up you go, the harder it is. And, like, heroes like Junkrat and Hanzo are kind of, like, left behind, it feels like, right now. But, you know, we're used to my role being bad. Genji's still, like, kind of bad, you know. But as long as you're not a tank player... You're enjoying yourself, which we'll get to you tanks later. I promise we're going to get to you tanks later. It's it's just, it's unavoidable. We're going to keep going forward, and I, I'm going to circle back and wrap this all up in a bow. But Aaron did a good job there. Now, what else are they doing that's actually good? They are finally going back and fixing bad map design that, were, that made the game miserable for years. For the first time, there's like a real dedication to go back and polish and fix fix some of the mistakes that Overwatch made in the past. Under Kaplan, and I know everybody loved Jeff Kaplan, this never happened. They never went back and fixed Brig properly. They never went back and fixed Double Shield properly. They just kept chugging along and their philosophy is, oh, well, we'll let what happens, happens. It's like, guys, this is not the 90s anymore. This is not the 2000s. If you want to be a competitive FPS game nowadays, you have to give the, your game the polish and care that it really needs for its community. And a lot of the map design was very just like anti-fun in general. A lot of the hero design was anti-fun in general. And the willingness to backtrack and go back and fix things that were mistakes is essential to success and it shows great character from team four which i'll be honest i had kind of written them off i'll be real with you and now my my reasons for that were very very different from a lot of other people's there are some things that i i don't need to talk about publicly that don't really matter in hindsight so we just kind of move on we focus on us guys that's what we want to do um but, you know, they've really done a good job from a system standpoint and a decision-making standpoint and a transparency standpoint on Aaron's side to make the game good. Now, look at Venture, right? And I know there's going to be some internet warriors who are getting mad about pronouns and whatever it is. This is not what my channel's about. My channel's about the science of the game. And if you're not here for the science of the game, just, just take your drama somewhere else. And I've said this a couple times. Like, listen, if it hurts you so much, just say Venture, okay? We want to talk about the gameplay, and that's my main focus here. We're going to talk about the gameplay. Awesome gameplay. Like, definitely some room for improvement, but a fun character with a unique gameplay loop and unique mechanics that make you think differently when you actually get into the game. These are the kind of characters that we want to have designed that make, you know, really expand on what makes Overwatch a great game. So Venture, another hit in my opinion. I love playing Venture. They're super fun. It's just, it's enjoyable. The gameplay, it's, it's, it's like DPS Doom is kind of back from not the cheese but like how you have to think about approaching a fight and cycling your cooldowns now venture could use one more cooldown they could like really like there, there are a couple times where you get stuck and it's like you're sitting there and you're like okay well i'm a sitting duck right so i maybe with that could get fixed up a little bit but a lot of promise right let's move on to the next point here that we're going to talk about that topic is going to be owcs right an organic pipeline for Overwatch Pro play that's slowly going to get built up from the grassroots, right? I know the person who's who's very, like, involved with that, Bailey, uh, Pizza Penguin. Bailey, I've only had great experiences with Bailey. I gotta give Bailey, uh, gotta give Bailey flowers, too, because, look, like, th this is, it's good. Like, it, it's actually good, it's exciting, and it all starts from a grassroot. It seems like the game has a chance to organically grow to its potential, despite all the Overwatch killers that have supposedly come out over the years. Overwatch does character identity and gameplay loops in its engine better than any other game in eight years, which is why everyone always says this is the Overwatch killer, because they all want to be what Overwatch is from its game engine perspective. And now, as long as they can get back to that core gameplay experience that Overwatch 1 had and the fun that it had, with consistent content and updates, the game is going to be in the best state it's been in maybe since October of 2020. Now, let's get to a little bit of the downsides. Well, I do think the game is actually trending upward and the narrative is finally starting to change as they admit the PvE was a sunk cost. Let's talk about the tank experience. Now, tanking is unsolvable. It's not going to be fun. No matter how you balance the game, tanking will not be fun in this game. Counter swapping constantly is not why you play Overwatch, right? What's fun about Overwatch is not what you pick, but how you play. Now, what you pick gives you different options to influence how you play, and so, you know, soft counters can't exist, right? But right now, there's just too much emphasis on counter swapping. You get rewarded too much just for picking the proper character rather than making smart plays because the gameplay loop in Overwatch 2 and 5v5 in reality 
is just way more one-dimensional. And if you like a simpler game without as many combos, complicated things, big things to do, that's fine. But I would tell you that's not really what Peak Overwatch is, right? What Peak Overwatch is are the big combos, the big setups, the different different ways that you can play different characters, and a ceiling that's insanely high, while Overwatch 2's ceiling is definitely significantly lower, it still plays like Overwatch. It's just Overwatch Light Edition is what I'd like to say. So for all you tank players out there, it's not going to get better. I'm sorry. Um, you guys are really the only ones who are left behind um, coming into Overwatch 2. And, you know, I, I do feel for you all because it does kind of suck on your end. That being said, what would be the biggest power play Aaron could make? Because I know the 5v5, 6v6 debate has been going on for a while. I was kind of the first person to make my video about it. And the main reason why I did is I, I was watching the Group Up podcast with, uh, I think it was Jake, Custa, and, and, and Jaws. And SVB, like, mentioned 5v5. We were like, oh, yeah, we all like 5v5, you know? And they were all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. They didn't even talk about it. What are we doing? So then I made my video. It was, it was just meant to be my opinion. It wasn't meant to, like, start some big debate and war that it kind of ended up going into. But you can see that there's definitely a lot of frustration from the casual players on that front. But here's what I would do if I was Aaron. The question is not, at this point, which one is better? The question is, how can you play the field, right? Here's my most base take of all for Overwatch 2. The Overwatch 2 branding is unsalvageable. It is unsalvageable. So I would not go back to 6v6 right this second. What I would do is I would work on a massive Overwatch rebrand for maybe a year from now, maybe 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 next spring for the next anniversary event. Take nine months, because this is a, this 5v5 iteration is playable. It's not better, it's playable. It's sustainable. Greetings. Right? And you've got where you need to be. You're sustainable. What I would do is I would do this. I would plan a massive marketing rebrand, right? The same way that Fortnite did chapter, Fortnite chapter 2.0, we're reversing that. We're doing, we're going back to just Overwatch because Overwatch 2's branding throughout the gaming industry, everybody knows what it is. It was a fake marketing scam from Bobby Kotick, not Team 4. I'm not trying to flame Team 4 with this, but it was the old Activision executives trying to pump and dump Overwatch just like Call of Duty, and everybody sees through the charade. We're not stupid. The people at home aren't dumb. So just get away from that branding. Let's get back to Overwatch, do a massive balance pack to shake up the game, like Aaron said, Go back to 6v6 and see if it works with like an, with maybe a new feature or two, a new character or two, whatever you want to do. I would wait, and that's how I play the field. If 6v6 doesn't work at that point, right, and the queue times, which really is the argument. It really is a queue times issue. If you go ask any tank player, they'll say their gameplay loop is worse. The only people who really, 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 for the most part, love 5v5 are like deep, generally speaking, DPS players um, who just have an easier time getting their direct value. Um, I, I, I am a DPS player as well, but I just like having more combos. I like seeing different characters in different ways. And before people say, oh, Q-Times wouldn't work, the new tanks that they put in the game are way more fun. Way more fun. You have Tank Doomfist with a dedicated player base. Junker Queen is way more fun than Sigma or Orisa ever will be. Right? Even Ramok Train. Even Wowga. I think Wowga and 66 would be really, really fun. That's just me personally, but, you know, Aaron said he was looking for ways to shake up the game. Well, that would bring a lot of people back, and you'd have a chance to shave off the Overwatch 2 branding, which Team 4 just needs to get away from. So, you know, I know that's a big debate. I'm not going to, you know, sit on it for too much longer, but the, the state of the game is going in a pretty good direction. Is it is it better than peak Overwatch 1? No, I don't think so, but this is definitely one of the better states the game has been in in a long time, and I definitely would recommend to people that... I, I would say if one of my friends asked me, should I play Overwatch 2 right now? I would say it's worth playing if you're looking for something to play. It absolutely is worth playing. If you're an old Overwatch 1 player who loved like the classic game, it might not be better at this point in time, especially if you're a tank player, but there's absolutely a ton of fun things that you can do to enjoy yourself while playing the game, and they made a lot of good decisions for a year straight, and I'm happy for them, you know? It's, it's nice to be able to give them their flowers and actually mean it, um, you know? And now, while I still am a little upset and feel used about what happened with Overwatch 2 and the cancellation of the PvP, and I'll hold myself accountable by not really affiliating with Blizzard anymore to make sure that I can, I can do my part to be honest to you guys and the people that I let down through my words, um... You know, I, I think the game is worth playing, and I think Aaron's done a good job of being a good leader and taking the game in a direction where it needs to go. But that being said, I would love to see 66 come back and for their own sake, just get rid of the Overwatch 2 brandings. Don't, don't try to force it. That ship has sailed. It failed. It's cool. Let's get the heck away from it. It's like WoW Reforged. What was that thing they tried to do with WoW? I don't know what it is. I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. But that being said, 
I think that that would be a great way to shake up the game. And the state of Overwatch is definitely in one of the better states. You're getting consistent balanced patches quickly. The new heroes, the metas are fun. DPS characters are viable. Double shield probably never would have happened if the DPS pass was in the game, which I'm not a big fan of roll passes. I think they're a little too strong either way. But they're, they actually have been willing to try new options. and They've surprised me in a pleasant way. So the state of Overwatch right now, it's good. It's on an upward trend. And there were a lot of dips for a couple years. But this is, you know, it's nice to be able to see the game go back to where it could be at the king of hero shooters. So, that's my state of Overwatch video. I think the game is worth playing. I think it's in a good state. And I would give it a, like a maybe an 8, 8.5 out of 10 right now. Um, I would say October of 2020 was a 10 out of 10. But this one's about an 8, 8.5. So, congratulations, Blizzard. A great turnaround year for you guys. It's nice to give you guys your flowers. And I hope to see you guys continue to do a good job with the game and surprise us all and keep trying new things. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you all next time. Peace out.